right, and we're back on social media meltdown here at Motor City Casino. Um, we're here for Social Media Day, which is hosted by Mashable, ultimately. Um, but our gracious host at Social Media, or I'm sorry, at Motor City Casino and Hotel have thrown us this awesome party. Um, and we are here with uh, Jag, who is a uh, DJ at Channel 955, which is a local uh, radio station. Not a local radio station. It's like no. the local radio Thank station. You like, so much. Right, right. The I'm not using this whole web thing. Should I look at the camera? Should I look at the two of you guys? Or you know what? what? You know, just relax. Scoot right. a little bit more. We're just hanging I'll out. I'll sit back a little we're bit. Just okay. As long as you get a microphone, we're exactly. Good. Right. It's all about the audio quality for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Not, that's radio. So, not channel nine five five. Obviously, they have a uh, Twitter presence. Mm -hmm. um, what other social media presence do you guys have? Um, well, I don't know if we, call, we would call texting social media, but we've got, um, you know, you can text us a comment on anything we're talking about or a song request to 95500. When I'm in the studio and I'm on the air, I've got about seven different tabs open in Google Chrome. I've got um, my work email. I've got my personal email. I've got the station Facebook. I've got the station Twitter. I've got our text messaging service. It was, you know, when I first started in radio 10 years ago, it was if you wanted to interact with the radio station or call the DJ, yep. you, exactly, you called, and that was it. And now... It's through the roof of all the different ways you can interact with us. Uh, it's unbelievable. There are people who probably don't even know the request line number because yeah. all they do is tweet, tweet us or they text us. I wanted to call into the morning show the other day, mm -hmm. and I couldn't like I couldn't remember the phone number, and he said it really fast. And I, then I was like trying to tweet and drive, and I was like, "This is an awful idea." <laughs> yeah, but I really had something to say, so I ended up pulling over because I three one three two nine eight nine five nine five. By the way, put it I in your phone. I knew it was nine five nine five, but I was like, "What well, was the beginning?" It's all yeah. the, always the beginning. You can yeah. get all the the last part. Yeah, the, the last parts we always remember. Um, so I ended up, I, I believe I tweeted at, I believe that's what I did. But I got my word out no matter what. So mm -hmm. I was. So that, that's actually really interesting what you're getting at. Um, even in the last 10 years, it's been such a paradigm shift of how you interact with Absolutely. your listener base. Yep. Um, I mean, it was just, you know, calling nine, channel 955 when I was a kid, you know. Well, like, sure, hey, yeah. Hey, can I request a song? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, did it move straight from phone calls to people at you know 955 or I mean it's really I mean really you know I mentioned 10 years but it's really been over the last I'd say four or five that's but I, really exploded I got to channel 955 a year ago and previous to that I spent uh, seven years at smaller stations in Burlington Vermont mm -hmm. and the, my previous station wasn't big on social media it was call 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 and now there's so many different ways in addition to calling and interacting with us we'll do text contesting yeah where, where mm -hmm. we'll say text this keyword at this you know at this time okay you know text 955 uh, text you know uh, radio to 95500 mm -hmm. whatever the keyword would be and we have a program we use that will pick a winner based off of the text that we receive um, it's really you, you guys know, just don't sit there in the back and be like I like that one you know? <laughs> no 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 it's, it's, it's actually a software program that runs it for us and, and picks a winner for us okay. so it's really incredible all the different ways that we can interact with our listeners. And, and we have the iHeartRadio app now, too, which is completely yes. free. It's on all uh, tablets. Uh, you can get it on, on your laptop and on your phone as well, where you can listen to not only Channel 955, any of our sister stations here in Detroit, or any station that's owned by our parent company, Clear Channel, which owns about 750 radio stations across the country. So if you love our morning show, Mojo in the Morning, and you're on, up north on vacation, or if you're in Florida or California, oh, I wonder what Mojo's talking about. Not only can you listen to the Channel 955 channel mm -hmm. on iHeartRadio, you can listen to the Mojo in the Morning channel. Yeah. Either you can listen live as the show is going on, or if you're in California and you wake up an hour or two after the show is over here, you can listen to it on demand that, in addition, addition to podcasts and everything we have on the website. Because it used to be you have to listen to the radio at set time to catch this. Mm -hmm. And while that's still true for some contesting, at this point... If you miss something, oh, I want to hear uh, Mojo's interview with 50 Cent or Nick Craig, or, or actually Nick Craig, our afternoon guy, interviewed 50 Cent last week. Oh. You can go on his page and hear the interview with 50 Cent. Uh, or Fiddy, I should say. 50, 50, Cent. 50 Cent. 50 Cent. Oh, yeah. um, so my question is, uh, when you're doing uh, like song requests, and mm -hmm. are you handling it all yourself while you're carrying on with your actual show presence? and Or do you have, is there like a crew that kind of handles these are the requests coming in? Well, I mean, I will, I will take the request as far as scheduling the music. We do have people that handle that as well, you know, and that will take the request into consideration, obviously, too. Um, a lot of times, um, some days I'll have interns in to screen calls for me, and they may be screening some calls while I'm doing the Twitter and the Facebook or vice versa. Um, Is it a much larger crew required now for how it used to be? 
Not necessarily. Um, on a morning show where there's a lot more interactivity, there's a lot more characters involved. You'll mm -hmm. have you know our three three main characters on our morning show: Mojo, Shannon, and Spike. And they've got more support staff. They've got Fletch, their audio guy. They've got their producer, Rachel. They've got. Um, all kinds of people hit, having a show like that where they're generating a lot more content as opposed to the rest of the day which is more music intensive. Yeah. Yep. With uh, with the content that you're putting out and uh, putting it out there kind of like as podcasts and things like that mm -hmm. and then uh, iHeartRadio, was that in response to, um, I mean, there was, there's been a big shift in people listening to internet radio sure. rather than just kind of terrestrial stations here. Was it something like, hey, our numbers are going down, we need to do this? Or was it kind of a a hey you know let's stay ahead of the game kind of thing probably a little bit of both actually okay. um, you hear so much about Pandora you hear all the you know it used are, are, are you even allowed to say Pandora when you're at channel 955 <laughs> <laughs> There's, there are no words that I'm banned from saying except for the dirty ones okay. obviously but I think um, you know you look at the way people listen to the radio now and you know again 10 years ago our competition here would have been other radio stations yes. in town. Now we're competing with whether it's satellite, whether it's Pandora, whether it's Slacker Radio, all these things online. I sh you know, not to be giving our competition plugs or anything, <laughs> but you, you've got um, you've got to go where your listeners go. Listeners are not going to necessarily follow you, mm -hmm. you know. And the way I see it is, when I lived in Vermont, billboards are actually illegal in the state of Vermont because really? it, because it helps with, because wow. it hurts you know it's, it takes away from the environment the natural beauty of so the what, environment exactly what i'd said to my boss there was facebook is a billboard for us mm -hmm. because we're going where our listeners are example 955 our target demographic is 18 to 34 year old females they're on facebook they're on twitter they're all over the place so we should have a presence so that we can stay top of mind for mm -hmm. our listeners yep. Um, and for example, when I, I do middays now from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., but when I was doing ni the night shift from 7 to 11 here, and I had tickets to some boy bands, One Direction, Justin Bieber, that sort of mm -hmm. thing, um, I had people listening for these tickets. And I think one contest that I did was listen to my show all night, and at some point I'm going to ask you for the last four <laughs> songs that I played. Oh and my god! And when I do, you know, caller 95, you have all four songs, you win tickets. So we had people hanging on my every word all night. But what I was seeing a lot of was not. Not, you know, somebody listening on a clock radio or a stereo like they would have a few years ago. Mm -hmm. We were getting uh, twit pics sent to our Twitter of screenshots of people's droids and iPhones listening to Channel 955 on iHeartRadio. Because yeah. you think about how many people listen to an actual radio radio outside the car, you don't have a lot of that anymore. Whether no. it's an office or whether it's at home, um, they're listening online on our website or they're listening with the app on their phone or their tablet so it's really fascinating to see how this has changed you know oh what i don't i don't own a radio in my house I, okay i don't i listen to the morning show while i'm getting ready on my phone and then until i get in the car and i turn it off and, and we're seeing that becomes more and more typical now and even in cars nowadays they're starting to integrate you know mm -hmm. things like iHeartRadio or uh -huh. pandora and things like that so that's and even now with your phones, I mean, I grew up in Boston and I follow the Boston sports teams really closely. Absolutely. Once in a while, if I'm in the car for a while, I'll pull up Boston Sports Talk Radio on my phone and just yep. plug it into That's my exactly. stereo. So we need to be in all those different media in order to stay relevant and stay competitive. That's a good point. you got to go where your listeners are. I, yep. I like that. And if, we, and if you don't follow the listeners where they're going, they'll find something else to entertain them. So it's important to be, in terms of technology, where everybody is. Mm -hmm. And it's important, too, to be a person, you know, be a personality. Not to be, you know, necessarily Howard Stern and say something shocking every five <laughs> seconds. No, no offense, I think Howard Stern's great. But I think um, you have to separate yourself from the Pandoras of the world. Mm -hmm. I, I can't be just a jukebox. It's, it's you got to have that content, that personality. Exactly. It's incumbent upon me every time I turn on the microphone to say something that our demographic is going to care about. Yeah. Whether it's whoa, just you know, this just broke like five minutes ago. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes are getting divorced. That, that was, was that so was sad. yesterday. That you know that that blew up and it was like whoa, I better be on this right away. And now in the morning, not only do I look, f not only do I look for content to talk about on the air. But I'm also looking for content for my blog on the website mm -hmm. and for our Facebook page. Even if it's a funny some e-card picture, like that we, you know, that we post on our Facebook page, <laughs> it gives our listeners a chance to interact with us on that platform or on Twitter. Or I will a lot of times on Facebook if I put an interesting story on my blog, I'll link to it from our Facebook page. And you know, two years ago it was go to channel955.com and click on personalities and then click on Jack. It's <laughs> Hey, go to our Facebook page, and the link takes you back to our website, and we get the web hits, which, is, which with anybody is obviously yeah. a goal at this point. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, 
what a, a, I'm trying to think of how does Channel 955 and social media, how is this all working for Detroit? Because, I mean, ultimately, it's why we're all here right now. It's sure. To turn social media into a spotlight for Detroit and to showcase it for what it's becoming and what it really is. Detroit really is a great city in terms of social media. People are very, very plugged in here. Um, and I think that goes a lot hand in hand with like the theme of this whole event today, the Detroit 2.0, mm -hmm. the rebirth of Detroit. Something that I found fascinating when I moved here a year ago is how much hometown pride is in Detroit. Detroit, yes. you know, nationally there are bad stereotypes about Detroit. And even when I got the job, he was, oh, you're going to move to Detroit? Yeah, I, I bet said, you got a couple funny yeah. looks. And I said, yes, it's a great station, and I've met the coworkers, and my coworkers are all great. Well, there's a real passion that I've seen from Detroiters and Michiganders in general yeah, we know that the city has taken a punch, and we know that the city's been knocked down a little bit, but the city is on the comeback, you know, and, the, and I think the car companies are a microcosm of that, where you've got, you know, you know, American car companies took a hit for a while, and there were some bailouts and everything else, and now everybody nationally talks about that Chrysler commercial yeah. with, with, you know, imported from Detroit and M&M and all that, and it's like... Detroit is going to be a cool place. Yahoo just listed Detroit as one of its top 15 cities um, to keep an eye on in the next several years. They, that po they posted that yesterday. Where I don't keep repeating myself here, but people are passionate about Detroit. They're excited to see the city come back, mm -hmm. and I think social media is a really big part of that. Yeah, because it's, it's a way for us to be able to share what we're doing here with uh, with the masses and let people know that live on the other side of the country that yep. we're not what you see on the news we're not that because all that makes it out there is the bad news about sure. Detroit. I mean this will not make national news but right. when Kwame Kilpatrick does something it makes national news and and there's an old there's an old news adage of if it bleeds it leads yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and that and those are the you know the shocking stories but there are so much great things going on in Detroit like you said it might not get covered by the mainstream media but it's on Twitter and it's on Facebook yep. and something really cool can go viral mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly what events like these and the people that are here are trying to accomplish um, mm -hmm. by their big social media presence. And uh, if we all keep up with it, we can really start to, to make an impact on the perceptions around not only the United States, but uh, hopefully around the world. And we're starting to see that already, so that's yeah. a really good point. I, I have a question, actually. Now, now that you... You know, a couple years ago, there wasn't internet radio, and now mm -hmm. that people are listening to internet radio more regularly, have you picked up a more um, international or national audience because of that, or or do people really we just have. stay with their own city? That's a great question, and I think that um, I'll give you an example. Um, we have a girl named Carrie who lives in Texas, and she found out about us. Uh, she was a ban big fan of an artist named Michael Afric who came to the station and stopped by, and he tweeted that he was going to be at Channel 955 in Detroit. So she went online, and she listened to the interview. And now she's like one of our most dedicated, loyal fans, really? and we love her for it. She's in Texas. She's got that long Texas draw. <laughs> when you, when she got, and, you know, um, she calls me every day. She calls our afternoon guy, Nick Craig, every day, like, I'll pick up the phone and I'll hear Jag in, in her Texas <laughs> accent right away. Carrie, what's going on? How are you? She listens to us nonstop That's all day. Awesome. You know, and, and things that we do that um, get national attention, whether it's um, our interview with One Direction when they came here on June 1st. Huge boy band that people are obsessed about nationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're posting that interview and that's going viral. And now people nationally are knowing about Channel 955 and we'll have someone listen from California on iHeartRadio or Texas or Florida or I, I, even sometimes overseas we'll get a couple, we'll get one once in a while. So you can kind of turn that around from bleeding listeners to gaining listeners. Absolutely. Just by content itself. Um, I mean, like you said, if you're interviewing a band like One Direction or 50 Cent or yeah. what have you, you know, you post that out there and you could potentially pick up listenership all over the country and the world. Right, and you know, we're, we, we measure our success in terms of ratings still, which is the biggest thing as it's always been, how many people are listening to the radio. But we're starting to see now a lot of value on web hits as well, mm -hmm. Facebook yep. interaction and web hits where, you know, we'll have advertisers who are buying advertising, you know, traditional commercial advertising on the radio, mm -hmm. but we'll also have people who are buying advertising on our stream. That, that are buying commercial time to run while you're listening to us online yeah. or, or the app. Mm -hmm. Or we'll have people that are buying banner ads on our websites. We have a green screen in our web department downstairs where we might shoot something for a client where it's a walk-on, where mm -hmm. I walk into the picture and say, hey, i got to tell you about such and such client, where when you go to our website, you might see me walk across the website, mm -hmm. you know, a <laughs> three-inch three inch tall version of me, say, hey, guys, want to tell you about this real quick. It's a quick little five-second thing. We make it not obtrusive or anything. Mm -hmm. um, that's, and that's the trick. Yeah, that <laughs> is the trick. You and 
it's intrusive, it gets annoying and people yeah. if it's turn off. If it's, if it's more annoying to you than the content is compelling, yeah. you will lose people. So that's the fine line we walk. And that's a really great uh, example of new media advertising, that the fact that it's more conversational. You're talking to me while I'm sitting at my computer and I'm not listening to a brand tell me about something. It's that word of mouth that people now trust more than the brands telling them what that, to do. And that's why live endorsements are a very big thing yeah. for Ex us. Exactly. I mean, radio is already very intimate. Yep. medium because it's uh, even though it's just a one-way conversation usually um, you, you feel like you've learned the people that are on the radio whether it's your drive time or you're sure. listening to the morning, morning show or not and I think like that can really enhance going to a website uh, and interacting with the various DJs and hosts I, I think that really can enhance the experience of the radio and um, keep it going because that was something I was worried about a couple years ago like are we just gonna lose AM and FM is gonna be the new AM kind of thing or you right. know and it's a matter of like I said just going where the people are you know you look at media and media how fast media is changing and newspapers are dying you know mm -hmm. um, and it's all going to web so the smart newspaper people are doing things online with the web you know and radio for there are naysayers about radio but studies keep showing that people listen to the radio every day you know the biggest thing for us is cars but in addition to cars people listen now on the apps and people listen all these places because you know they identify with our morning show mojo's been on here forever and everybody yeah. in detroit knows who mojo is and they and they listen to him um, and then the station they, it the station does very well because we interact with our listeners one of the things that really blew me away not to get too far off topic here is when the One Direction show happened, um, I had interacted with all these, you know, teenage girls on on Twitter. As far as they were tweeting me about One Direction, and I was, you know, okay, we've got tickets at this time. Listen at this time for tickets and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. to the point where I would go home at night, and <laughs> they'd be tweeting me all night. And it used to be I could only talk to my audience for four hours a day or five hours a day when I'm on the radio. Now there's a constant 24-hour conversation going. And because I would acknowledge these girls and talk to them. And some, probably some boys too. When you know, <laughs> there, you know, there are some boys who like boy bands. But uh, you know, interacting with these people twenty four seven, they felt they had a connection with me. And what blew me away, and was actually one of the highlights of my career at this point, was when we were at the One Direction show. We had all these girls who re I'm wearing my you know my same Channel Nine Five Five shirt I'm wearing now, mm -hmm. and they recognized me from Twitter. And they were coming up to me outside the vent outside the Fox Theater here in downtown Detroit. Jack, oh my God, Jay, hey, thanks for tweeting me. Like, you tweeted me. Can I take a picture with you? And it was... That's so awesome. It was such a cool moment for me to see that all afternoon because I had a personal connection with these listeners because of my interaction with them mm -hmm. on Twitter. You're always on air. Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> that's exactly right. That's a great way to put like it. Do you feel like social media has turned your job and people like you's job into a 24-hour career? I do. And I you feel that you have to, you to to maintain it. You have to keep these relationships no matter what time it is. Um, right. I mean, I try to respond to people as quickly as possible. If I'm in a movie, if I'm on a dinner, I'm on a, if I'm on a date, if I'm sleeping, you know, I may not respond 24 hours a day. But, you know, unless it's just somebody being obnoxious, I will try to, res I, I will try to respond to just about every tweet that I get. And I feel that that's really helped me, um, you know, build my both the brand for Channel 955 yeah. and my personal brand mm -hmm. as JAG. Yeah. I, it's Twitter has been unbelievably helpful for that to me, even even more so than Facebook. I yeah. think so. I think, I think so Twitter too. Twitter lends itself to uh, radio better than fa live radio. Uh, I think yep. Twitter is a is a better way to interact because you get that quick blip and you know who knows if you're talking about something five minutes later you, that might not be what you're talking about so that instant interaction that you can get right I you mean, know. you could do that through Facebook, too, but Twitter's just so light and accessible. Right. Well, it's funny because the, the way they, they're both trending, uh, the station has... I'm going to get my numbers right here. I don't have them in front of me, but <laughs> the station has uh, 110,000 fans on Facebook. They have 21,000 on Twitter. Me, I have 1,000 fans on Facebook, but I have 2,000 on Twitter. Yeah. So... So it's really interesting to see that start starting to shift a little bit, particularly with the younger end, the probably age 13 to 20 or so set. They, they seem to be more passionate about Twitter than Facebook. Yeah. I would have to say Twitter is my my medium of choice if I had to choose a platform. It's less sticky. <laughs> you it get is. you get less. I don't have a, I don't have time for all that Facebook. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right. Um, but when I'm out there looking for news, and especially regarding brands, mm -hmm. I much rather follow brands on Twitter. Right. It's more straight to the point. I know what they're telling me is the most important, and mm -hmm. the fluffy stuff doesn't matter, I guess. Um, but uh, and I think we're going to continue to see, especially with 
the younger generations are more moved to smaller communications. So well, it's funny. You can take you take Facebook and you can divide it into the status update is Twitter and the photos are Instagram. Yep. Yep. So it's kind of it's just been divided up and separated like that, which I, think I find kind of amusing. It has. Um, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna start winding up here. Is there any kind of plugs you want to give? Um, channel five, channel nine five five. If you're yourself? gonna give me the opportunity, I'd love to. Uh, the uh, station is uh, facebook.com slash channel nine five five. Also, the Twitter is at channel nine five five. Myself, my Facebook is facebook.com slash jags page j a g s p a g e, and my Twitter is at jag the dj. Also, um, if you have a smartphone or tablet, make sure you download the iHeartRadio app. It's free, and you can listen to our station and any of our sister stations anywhere in the country. Awesome! Great! Great! Yeah. Thank so, you guys so much. Thank you hey, very thank much you. for stopping by.